just the word alone is a beautiful word and it invokes i smell things dude i you know colors everything i'm, I'm a freak i guess like that Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in our old friend, and I can say that confidently, our old friend, Dennis Sanders, a.k.a. Spirit in the Room. How are you doing, man? Long time no chat. I couldn't be better right now. It's a bit hot, but, you know, that's, if that's all you can complain about, that's it. The Earth hates us and wants us gone. What else is new? <laughs> I understand that. I feel that. What's going mm -hmm. on with you? Are you good? I'm good, man. I'm good. Like I said off air, uh, just been overcoming some obstacles and doing all right. Uh, so far, so good. Another good year of great music, and that's what I try to focus on. Things to distract with. Things are just, uh, you know, people don't know. I've followed your career for a very, very long time. Before this project, your other projects and bands, and now this. For a very long time coming, you are releasing a new EP on house core records you must be stoked yeah man yeah it's been it's been a long time coming with this the cp so just knowing that it's it's on its way is uh i can i can i can i can, I can uh, stop holding my breath you know right on and i mean you spent years you were so prolific for a long time uh you know at least uh, up until the last few years where you would put out like project after project surprise drop songs and EPs, inventive artistic projects and videos, live performances. You really, you know, you put the work in leading up to this, I have to say. Thanks, man, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I sometimes forget that that stuff, you know, I, but yeah. I, I slowed down quite a bit once I started getting in more, you know, involved with other people. You know, but for a long time, it was just me. And then, you know, I had a live band, but I, I, I was, it was just me. And now there's more people involved, gratefully, gratefully so. And it just takes a minute now. I get that. I get that, truly. And, uh, and of course, the more people you have around you, although, you know, the outsiders might think it's, uh, oh, well, now you have support. But it's still this is your vision this is your band this has always been your your project it's got you know it doesn't have your name on it but it has your name on it you know people know you as this so yeah yeah uh, and you know to be honest dude I, i'm i'm really I'm really digging it i'm really digging where we're at right now um we, we're we're not we, we spent the beginning of the year just playing a bunch of shows um up the west coast and in los angeles and whatnot and we don't have any shows coming up. I think our next couple of shows are in, in October. And right now we're just like making cool shit. And it's, I'm really stoked to be doing that too. And I was like, okay, we, we, we can play live and we're gonna again. It's just, it's right now, it's the time to come up with shit to give you and, and for people to see you and, and whatnot. And I'm really happy to be doing that and seeing people. So Flamingo is the EP for the uninitiated and not ready to know. And uh, you better get acquainted, as I like to say. And uh, right off the bat, there's a really insane video that's sort of an accompaniment of video series, I'm imagining, that this is gonna be a series of videos of an interconnected story, it seems. But it's crazy, right off the bat. Yeah, man, that's all Joe Cardamone and his brother Sean. It's American Primitive, dude. And, and like, for the longest time I, I did, I, I just, I had I did everything myself, and, and when you work with somebody like Joe, at least for me, I, I I trust his artistic vision. I trust I trust the guy, you know. So I just kind of let him do his thing, man. And everything you see, all all that the storyline, everything that that's Joe and his team. Amazing. I don't want to get smashed in the back of the head with a ball peen hammer. I don't want to spoil it too much, but there's a lot of stuff going on. It's Dennis versus the mob, basically. Nothing like a good hallway fight or random video game style bosses coming at you. Uh, I don't. Again, I don't want to spoil it. It's really magical. People need to watch this thing. We're gonna link everything in the description. Where to buy the record? Where to follow you on all your things and this video. And hopefully by the time this comes out, there'll be perhaps another video. I don't know what the uh, schedule is, but it's definitely part Flamingo Part One is this video, right? So there's definitely other parts. 
Yeah, it'd be kind of silly to call it part one and <laughs> not have part two. Or, you know, whatever. You know, we've, we we I, I did an EP called Volume One with the intentions of you know, a volume two and a volume three. <laughs> and then I just kind of gave up on those songs and just released them as singles. But um, yeah, well, there's going to be a part two. Killer. I know that it's very cliche for people to say, like, this is the best thing I've ever done. But what I will say about Flamingo, spending a little time with it, getting ready to chat today, is that it does encompass kind of all your styles across your career. Uh, you know, there's like a little electro rock uh, eclecticism. There's like hardcore. There's metal. It's a lot of things. Stoner rock in a couple of places even. Uh, you know, it's, it touches all the bases that you have probably covered over a decade. Thanks, man. I feel that way too, actually. Yeah. I feel like there's a little bit, of, if you've paid attention to anything I've done in the past, you will know that you will, you know, as you notice that. And I really, I really look forward to people hearing because we've already started the, the, the next one. And um, that's even more uh, out there and not maybe not out there it's out there in comparison because it's not the same it's completely different but yeah a little bit of everything right on and then just in an update of a question i have probably asked you at least once before when you start writing anything do you go do you gravitate to a particular instrument do you gravitate to guitar do you come up with lyrics or poetry or vocal lines first and then complement it with the music how does that process work for you is it different every time i always wondered that it's always the bass guitar everything is on bass i, I start up i'll make a beat I'll, I'll start with a drum beat on a, on a midi controller which is basic i've had the same midi controller since 2009 i believe um and I'll make a, a beat on that, and then I'll just go to the bass, and I'll just pick up the bass and just write from there on the bass. And the bass influences the vocals, and the melody influences the lyrics, and it, but it all comes from the rhythm section, basically. You know, and th this is actually the first time I've had my live band play on record with me. This flamingo is the first time I've had my live, you know, like I just said, and. I cannot wait to do it again, man. It's a completely different experience having these guys involved. Yeah, they're, they're great. That's amazing, and hopefully that allows you to do what you do even better. And, yeah, uh, you know, Flamingo is always such a very, you know, such a weird animal, uh, which you could say is true of you as well in your career. And it's such a, uh, you know, it's such a dichotomy about flamingos, right? They're beautiful, they're weirdos, they're they're just weird looking and then there's a whole lot of layers to i think listening to this record and the flamingo video and all these things i think there's a lot of things subtle references in there that i'm probably not even picking up on yet that i'm looking for but i'm maybe not connecting visual man you know like it's visual without having to be like check out these lights you know it's just the word alone it's a beautiful word and it invokes I smell things, dude. I see, you know, colors, everything. I'm, I'm a freak, I guess, like that. But uh, yeah, visual. It's very visual. In the, the record itself, it's a very, um, yeah, there's something very exotic and decadent about flamingos, too. You know? I, I feel the same way about the music. Nice. I think also flamingos are supposed to be very vicious, even though they're pretty. Right, you always equate them with you know like Miami or California, but um, you know like koalas, they're adorable, but they might kill you. Yeah, well, if you're, I mean, yeah, it's just I'll say yeah, but if you if a flamingo kills you, you you have <laughs> pretty much pretty weak. Yeah, you didn't deserve <laughs> to live anyway. I yeah. mean, you know, we don't want to hurt animals. But, but, but yeah, look, can... fucking mogwais, you know. <laughs> right, right on. Yeah, I agree. Yes, uh, you you lost the uh, gene pool Olympics if you got killed by a flamingo. Here lies Keith killed by yeah. a flamingo. That would be very. It would make me sad in advance if I had a way of knowing that. Killed death by a flamingo. What? Right. What? It's gonna be some band out there has to have this somewhere in the song. That's a small already. man. Yeah, you have to be a really small man. <laughs> right. Or just just like you know some kind of inherent problem, some weak, some yeah. issue. Some kind of issue. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to besmirch people. Uh, <laughs> make up scenarios that insult somebody out there is going to be offended. Jeez. Oh, 
<laughs> but um, yeah, man, it's awesome to just, again, this is such an exciting time for you. And I know, uh, you know, we've talked in the past what a, what a Phil fan you are. And now you're on his label. You guys are, you're from New Orleans. So you share a lineage with the, you know, one of the best front men ever. And uh, again, it's got to be like surreal to you. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not even, it's not only surreal, but it's also a dream come, like a literal dream come true. It's some, it was, this was a reoccurring, when I was about um, maybe 14, 13 or 14, I, I would, I remember there was a summer or, or maybe it was a, a year or something, I don't know, but I would have these reoccurring dreams where I was hanging out with Phil in his barn and we were smoking weed and we were, and he was showing me his side projects, you know, a bunch of unknown side projects, and then we were jamming. And I would just have these. It was just this total fucking Detroit Rock City dream, you know. And then cut to my, you know, my my thirties. It actually fucking happens. It's like uh, it, that's not the first time something like that's happened to me, but it's definitely still very uh, surreal. Nice, it manifested itself. In, in strange ways, man, but I tried my hardest to just kind of not be a dick, you know, because <laughs> you never know. You never it helps. Know. Don't be a dick. Yeah, it may get you somewhere by being nice and cool. If you've been a dick in the past, make amends and whoever holds on to that, those hard dick feelings, you know, that's it's only hurting them. <laughs> exactly dickheads repent if you're out there in the sound yeah. of our voices um yeah. and those hard dick feelings that you just talked about which yeah. could go many ways um it's probably unfair to put you on the spot and ask your opinion but we've talked about this in the past anyway how do you feel about the pantera reunion with rex phil zach wilde and charlie benante well i'm gonna be 100 uh percent honest with you here and I'm going to tell you that I think it's really beautiful. I think it's going to benefit a lot of people, man. I think there, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's good for everyone, you know? And it's another thing. It's like, if you're holding on to hard dick feelings, you need to let that shit go. Right on. Yeah. Uh, life is too short. For sure. man. Yeah, man. Think about people, the people that are going to see that and, and, and dig it. And the kids are going to experience that. And the, 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 it's just a beautiful thing. Most people have only heard terrible covers of Walk and don't actually, and ha did not actually see Pantera, right? They've been gone to, you know, over 20 years now since their last show as of this recording. And I was very fortunate. I saw them a lot and I followed them around and I saw them a ton. But I know that I was very lucky. And they're, you know, I say all the time, it's like, I think they're going to do it right. I would, they wouldn't, especially Philip and Rex would not go even put their name on it if they didn't care enough to make it, you know, do it right. So I know that people, you know, very cynical, everybody's very cynical, but there's a lot of bands out there with either one or no original members. A lot. You don't know. So I get it that some people who felt it was very special to them, listen, the brothers, you know, resting in peace, it's, tra it's tragic, they're both gone. And uh, I'm actually excited about it. Uh, the more I think about it, the more excited I get. I'm definitely going to go check it out. I'm going to go in with an open mind. There's no replacing Daryl and Vincent. There's just none. But like, you know, you couldn't have picked two guys. Yeah, or is nobody trying to, you know? That's... Yeah, no, no, of course. And again, like those are guys who are peers and, and bros of those guys. So yeah, I think it's yeah, a beautiful we're... thing, man. And I look forward to seeing it myself. Right on, right on. Yeah. Who, um, better, who better to do it too, you know? Yeah, of course, Zach and, and Charlie and Philip and Rex. And I, I had said on another podcast, on a podcast that I have that's a side thing from Ghost Cult, the Glacially Musical podcast, I had said, like, don't Philip and Rex also own the name, like, have, their, it's their name, too. They put that band on the map, too. It's their legacy, too. Uh, you know, if Max Cavalera and his brother Igor can go out and tour and play all the Sepultura songs and not call it Sepultura and call it Cavalera Brothers, why can't you have a reunion of Pantera with these guys? Why not? It's music, man. It's music. It's, it's for everyone. Or it's not. It's it's either not or yeah, I don't know. I don't I think it's a beautiful thing. There you go. <laughs> uh in general, what else is uh, going on? You just making music and this drop is coming soon and anything else going on? Any good hobbies? Was read any good books lately? Listen to any good old records lately? What 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 have I been jamming, man? 
I just recently, I got, I got some, uh, there's a great band out here in Los Angeles called Ugly. I really dig them. They're like some 70s punk type shit. They do like the gun club, that kind, kind of shit. It's really great. I think they're great at what they do. I was listening to this new band earlier though, man. I, I, if I could find it on my, I never heard this before, but uh, they're called Chat Pile. Yep. Everybody's talking about that band right now. Yeah, I just got it. They got sent to me on, you know, Spotify recommended it, dude. It's fucking, I was digging it. I was digging it. It, it, it was reminded me of, of things that I'd heard when I was a kid that influenced me to do the things I'm doing today. So that that's cool, man. And then, you know, you got the old standbys, you know, shit that you, you've never stopped listening to that you can listen to forever. Right on. I don't believe in guilty pleasures, but do you have like a favorite band that would surprise people who are fans of your music already? No. Uh, well, I mean, you could probably hear it in the music, but um, I have no guilty pleasures, but there is a band that I've been representing and waving the flag for since they were around since I was a teenager. It's a band called Dead Z. Yeah. I love Dead Z, dude. I, I, and you know what? I say that like, it is an answer to your question about a guilty pleasure. It's not that I feel guilty, but God damn, anytime I try to talk to somebody about it, they have this, they either don't know or they have this idea of what it, it is. And it's just like, ah, I don't know. It's just, maybe it's just people just not hearing what I'm hearing, you know? But I, but then again, I, like I also love Portal, you know? So I, I still hear things different in the mixes for Portal than that you know listening to it for however many years and still hearing something different every time is pretty special but dead sea is always going to be something whether they make new music or not i love that i love that band i love that project yeah that that well, debut just, album i think just turned 20 last week yeah so man to yeah. really feel old and uh, i also love that band and i saw them live and i just think anybody that came from that era the late 90s except the only band that maybe two bands escaped derision and that's like slipknot and system of a down and everybody else got karate chopped by the arms folded metal guys which you know i have been one try not to be but i have been i never got to see him dude i lived in louisiana i feel like i was maybe one of three people that even that had heard of him so i grew up in louisiana and nobody was listening to dead sea in louisiana. <laughs> but um i think elijah's were a really really uh underrated he's a really great song yeah I, would be, I hope to work with that guy so we'd be great for them to make a comeback are you from nola itself or surrounding no um i was born in joliet illinois and i was raised in uh indian bayou louisiana which was uh about two hours from nola and to, to us like nola was the city mm. but where i grew we like didn't wear shoes where i grew up you know um, and the dream was to get to the big city, was to get to NOLA. And yeah, and I I dreamt of NOLA and I ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you went to the biggest city almost, so nice work. Thank you, man. You overachieved. Uh, but what's not overachieving is Flamingo, this new EP coming out on Housecore Records. Dennis, man, it has been a long time coming. I, just congratulations. Super proud of all your successes. Get on tour. I will come see you, whatever city we're going to be aligning to get together in. And uh, we'll raise a glass and uh, fist bump it out. Because, again, man, this has been, I'm just so thrilled for you. I can't thank you enough for your, uh, that's a Louisiana band behind you. I recognize them. Cabra, that's right. Yeah, Lafayette. I love them. Lafayette. Lafayette. Um, yeah, that 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 was where the that Lafayette was my city. Like I would live I, I grew up in the bayou, but Lafayette was like 20, 30 minutes from me, and that's where I raised all my hell, dude. <laughs> nice. I love Lafayette. And I say Lafayette because when I first met Phil and Selmo, I was saying after growing up there, I'm like laugh I'm from Lafayette, you know, I'm from Lafayette. I met yeah. Phil, I met Phil and he goes, ah. Lafayette. <laughs> so I've never said it the same since, but yeah. Anyway, great, great band, cool dude, cool people. I, I don't know them, but I, uh, represent. Yeah, they're fantastic. I just saw them recently. So good cool. stuff, Dennis. Once again, man, thanks for hanging out with Ghost Cult. Thanks for doing what you do. Everybody, check out Flamingo coming soon on House Court Records. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you,